terms of I'm building Jazz, which is a local first framework um, for React or vanilla JavaScript that you can build your own local first apps with. I want to talk to you today how I came to the conclusion that I think every app secretly wants to be local first. And, and a second broader notion that actually local first is just a special case of distributed state. I started just because every time I'm like, let's build a new app, I'm confronted with all of this like stuff to think about and it's really annoying. And I'd like to like really not think about it and really just like kind of find my data model, implement permissions and build my app. That's what Jazz lets you do. And the way it does that is that it takes kind of like the four biggest things that apps consist of, like APIs, databases, blob storage, and, and message queues, and replaces them with a single new abstraction, which I'm calling collaborative values or core values. Um, core values are really just distributed state with secure permissions built in. How do they do that? Um, it's a really tight integration between like custom CDTs that are built and, and like we saw from Lit now, public key cryptography. The good thing though is you don't really need to care about that because to you it just looks like simple, mutable JSON state and, and building with it really feels like you're just building like a mock version of the app with local state, but then it's magically like persisted and multiplayer and all of that. Um, what's happening is that like all of these difficult topics that you have traditionally with apps that where you have a lot of app-specific logic or at least configuration, they're not completely generalized with like new abstractions. And you're probably like, okay, this, this is all nice and good for like obviously local first React apps, uh, sorry, obviously local first apps, but like what about apps that are not obviously local first? And I hadn't really spent too much time thinking about that until um, I started building Circular. So let, let you tell me, let me tell you the story of that. Like, um, a couple of weeks ago, my girlfriend comes up to me and is like, I need an Instagram scheduling and insights app. And she's like, look how shit Meta's official business apps are. <laughs> and like, Hootsuite and other third party apps are also like not great and expensive. I want to build an app and I got some ideas. And I'm like, hmm. And then she said something really beautiful. Can we build it with Jazz? <laughs> <laughs> the problem is kind of, this, this doesn't really sound local first at all. Like, you have interaction with third-party APIs. We'll need like Chrome-like tasks that run off device on some server, and we'll have to deal with like lots of heavy binary data for the images. But then this like thought that I kept having for a while kind of became clear suddenly that like wait, local first is just a special case of distributed state, and can we try and build this app in a in an as as much local first as possible kind of way? And what would that be like? So let's talk about the architecture of it then. I want you to take a second and imagine if you were to build this in a traditional way, what would it look like? Okay, done, done imagining. Let's have a look at how, how does it look like with uh, <laughs> what does it look like with distributed state? And it's, it's kind of really simple. We just we have a brand that has posts. Posts can be like different states. You have drafts, they become scheduled, and then they become posted. And, and now you're probably like, wait, on, so I'm like, this isn't an architecture diagram. It's just a data model. And I'm like, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> because there isn't really much architecture to it. And in fact, you can start building this just clients like just in the browser, and that's exactly what we did. So you have all of this in the browser. We even like store the, the long-lived API token that you're supposed to use server-side client side because it's end-to-end -end encrypted. It feels kind of illegal, but it works. Um, and the browser just directly talks to the Instagram API to post posts. But then the problem is, well, you, you want to schedule them, right? That you don't want to leave your device on for them to get posted, so we have to introduce a little bit of a server-side thing, uh, which I'm calling this the scheduling worker here, which uses like the, the JS Node.js library. And it, it just subscribes to and, and edits the same data, and the way it works is just that the, in the browser you can do drafts and you can mark things as like desired to be scheduled, and then the scheduling worker picks them up, actually schedules them, and when it becomes time for them to be posted, makes the calls to the Instagram API, but notice, for example, for fetching insights or other things, the browser can still talk to the Instagram API. Now we've got this like really nice distributed system with distributed state. Um, you want to see it live? Let's have a look at it. So this is what the app looks like. Can you see it? Yeah, I've got my brands here. This is actually my girlfriend's Instagram, and you can see she's been posting a lot here. This is all local first. 
I've got like a preview of the feed of posted posts so far over here. I can see like some insights, I can see the scheduled posts, and then I've got like lots of drafts here. And I'm not going to do that with hers because I don't want to mess with it, but I could just like drag them into the feed and it will like auto scale the schedule them, or I can choose like a date here. And because it's local first, there's different ways I can look at the data. I can have more like a table view, everything loads super quickly. I can order by some insights. And I, we, we even do like custom insights where we like look at the hashtags you have in different posts and how those did and, and calculate some really advanced metrics. And the, these are literally just calculated every time this table is surrendered and you can just do that brute force because it's local first and fast. That's the app. Let's maybe try and make it a bit more interactive. So I'll go to my humble jazz brand here, which just has a single post so far. I added some draft posts. Maybe I can schedule one for like later today. I can do that just by dragging it here. Uh, let's see how well this will work over Wi-Fi. You can see that it's like it has this little plain icon because like it's local first scheduled, but the scheduling server hasn't picked it up yet. Let's see if that will work. Um, but one thing I wanted to try is maybe is there, oh, now it's scheduled, perfect. So that should actually get posted. Maybe it should have chosen a different time. We can try that in a second. Um, who wants to volunteer to be my social media manager? <laughs> You know what, let's do something crazy. Let's just make all of you my social media manager. So what I'll do is I'll go here to manage brands, invite collaborators, and I'm going to paste this link into our Discord. And you can try, open that link, create an account, it will ask for your touch ID, and then you should see the same kind of um, screen like you see here, you click on it. Uh, it's a bit fiddly to use on mobile, but give it a try and you should be able to create new drafts tap here to choose a picture, create a description, and if you want, you can schedule it for like in a minute and it should hopefully actually post on Instagram. Ooh. <laughs> Giving you a second, let's see if anything happens here. But otherwise you can come back to it later. Oh, things are appearing. It's always a bad idea to do this over conference Wi-Fi, but it's eventually consistent, so you can come back to it later. If this looks fun to you, um, check out my session tomorrow where we'll build um, all of linear with Jazz, probably not quite all of it, but maybe a little bit. <laughs> but I think that that'll be a really good example of a more traditional local first app, and you'll really get to see what Jazz looks like and feels like. Finally, oh wow, there we go. That's that's also good. It's going to be the best like developer tool Instagram ever. Um, I want to close with a couple words from some other awesome people. But first, like, what, what, what did we like realize when building this app? Like, I knew it was going to be really nice and simple because we've all heard the same argument over and over again how easy it is to build stuff in local first. But doing it, it's actually it's so much fun. Like previously, you had to think about like architecture and deployment. That's probably like eighty percent of the effort. Think about the data model, and you have like ten percent of thinking about what actually matters, like your app. And now it really feels like you spend most of the time on what you add, and, and like we got this real giddiness of like, oh, we could add this feature and this feature, and for all of these features, it's really just like, how do we add that to the UI, and not like what kind of the service architecture do we really need to build to support that? Um, and you get all this extra stuff for free that traditional um, infrastructures don't give you easily. And here I'd like to close with um, a quote from. Two brave people who are using Jazz to build a local first app called Invoice Raider, which like collects your invoices for you. They were like, when we were when we started building Invoice Raider, we just wanted to build like a single player local first app, um, and we were adding to add teams and collaboration much much later on, way after launch. But because they built it with Jazz, they actually got all of that for free from day one, just out of the data model. And like you saw, it's kind of the same with with Succulent. You could all just join the brand, start doing stuff. And there's like there's literally just the code for the invite button that, that enables that. That's all for me for today. Uh, I hope I see many of you tomorrow. Thank you very much.